Welcome back to my garage. Ever seen something like this before? Today we're making the parts for this assembly and I'll explain later what's the what's the deal here. Somebody's going to go a hundred miles an hour on that thing? Yeah, we hope. There gotta be some yeah. serious drinking going on first before you do that, man. <laughs> some serious drinking, right? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, are you It'll work. It's not a problem. They don't fit though. <laughs> So here I'm fixing that uh, mistake which made them not fit. I'm just uh, making more clearance between the case and uh, and these mounts. So I I made that clearance too tight for extra style points and it was a bad idea. The set height was uh, not completely matched, so I had to do one of them uh, uh, like another pass. So how this engine is mounted in the dyno is uh, pretty much exactly how it will be mounted in the bike. But there will be uh, linear guides, it will li like the previous engine, uh, running on linear guides. Here I'm making that, uh, that cross crossbar for the, for the engine mount. And this is a 3D tester, it's, it's really convenient for, uh, for zeroing parts, so much faster than any other method. Pilot drilling for holes. I need a way to attach it to the mill. It's a little bit large for, uh, for my table. I'm drilling those holes. Here I'm squaring it up and bringing it to size. And then I'm machining some channels for those uh, engine mounts to sit in so that they will be oriented the right or register into that uh, cross cross thing drilling the holes they fit that's good that little notch you see there in the middle that's for uh, that's clearance for the um, for the secondary intake pull cable throttle cable Transfer punching the holes. And drilling. Doing a tap size for M8 threads. Tapping. See my tap guide there. Everything seems to fit just fine here. So that's great. I said there was going to be some side projects, including a especially ludicrous one. Well, Just picked up this sweet platform for side project shenanigans. Kindly donated by Glenn Knutsen. Thank you, Glenn Knutsen. Decided to make that uh, that crossbar thing a little bit more pretty by making these notches so that it will. Yeah, you will see later that it'll um, it'll match up with the um, with the side cradle things, which I will machine will be machining now, I think. Titanium bolt, only thing I had that would fit, so thought that was kind of funny. Marking and cutting stuck for those uh, cradle sides. 
I realized, uh, or I, I had removed uh, something I thought was just uh, dead weight, and uh, it didn't seem to do to make any purpose or ha have any purpose. But actually, that uh, that thing you see there, that uh, that kept chips from going into the the limit switches, and uh, I had some problems holding. That was the problem. Squaring up uh, another piece here. That's uh, that's like the, the cross brace or cross frame thing for the cradle. Everything will make sense in a little while here. This was too large for my mill. I couldn't do both sides, so I had to do one side and flip it. And this is uh, my, I'm manually controlling the mill here, just uh, feeding it uh, by hand or by my controller. Here's one of those uh, cradle uh, swing arm sides, making some clearance holes for uh, for bolts and uh, and the bearing, and then doing a contour. So bearing fit is just perfect. I uh, this was machined to be 47 millimeters, and it seems to be pretty much spot on 47. So I dropped the kids off at uh, school and in the kindergarten, and. Uh, this is my first day at work here. I'm going to work in my garage. That's a milestone. Q compressor. It's gonna be a great day. Just send it. <laughs> That's not me. Had to flip it to be able to machine this side, and now I'm machining those. Uh, those notches which will correspond or fit like into that cross uh, thing I machined earlier. We'll see in a minute. Mill is churning along and uh, I'm doing some deburring. I've ordered some uh, some chamfer mills from China, hoping they will ar arrive soon and that will make make for much less of this stuff. Turning to small or short axles. I kind of screwed up here and uh, and measured while this thing was hot, so it turned out slightly undersized from what I would have desired. But you can see here the bearing fit is kind of loose, but I think it'll work. It'll work. Otherwise, I'll just machine a couple of new ones. I haven't got a parting tool, so that's why I'm cutting these pieces with the grinder and I'm uh, facing it to size in the, in the lathe. Need to get a parting tool or grind one from, from a blank. Drilling the holes, clearance holes for M8 bolts. And that's uh, the M12 uh, hole for the for the load cell. Had to do some um, some fixturing to be able to transfer those holes accurately. And this piece is too high for my for my drill press, so I had to do it by hand. wasn't wasn't much of a problem actually. I was kind of fearing this would be problematic. It wasn't. Well, aluminium is soft, so that's why. More tapping, my favorite activity. I'm using my small compressor for this, and that's why it's uh, constantly kicking in.
gluing and uh, hammering in those bearings. Should really get a press. More drilling and tapping. Here's all the parts for this um, swinging engine cradle mount. This is real time, by the way. You see there how the bearings are mounted in those uh, the engine mount swing thing, and and there's uh, axles in the in the cradle sides, which. Uh, so the bearing is uh, support the, the engine is supported by those bearings. So that's the load cell. So here it is, the swinging cradle dyno engine mount for my engine. It's actually upside down now, it's meant to be mounted the other way around, just like in the bike and uh, just like with all my engines it seems. If you've been following along you might notice this is not what my original design looked like. Jim, that's this guy. So here's El Himador. <laughs> Left a comment saying that if I would mount the engine so that it could slide, I could have the load cell directly uh, measuring torque from the crank, like from the pull from the primary pulley and belt. And uh, it's not sliding, it's rotating, but a uh, classic example of why didn't I think of that myself. But uh, Jim's a clever guy, great guy. The whole engine can rotate and the load cell, there's missing a bracket here, it's supposed to be mounted down here. And it's a uh, it's a 50 kilogram uh, load cell, so it's uh, for for the tiny amount of torque this engine will produce, maybe between 10 and 15 newton meters. I had to have it really close to the to the center of rotation for it to be within range. So that's why it's so close. And this will feed its readings into the yourdyno.com box. There's a link in the description. Check it out. It's uh, Seems to be a really, really awesome system. Can't wait to try it out. And it can control inertia dynos also. So I will hook it up to both this load cell dyno and my inertia dyno. That's it for now. My pistons have been taken hostage by USPS, it seems. It's been four weeks now. No updates on the tracking. Uh, Mark is making a batch of new ones and to get some pistons here. So thanks a lot, Mark. Working half time in the garage. I think this dyno will be built in no time because I really got a lot done today Really See you next time